To keep yourself updated, subscribe to Indigo Learn and click the bell icon and download our app OneFin to start learning on the go. Let's now understand fair value less cost of disposal. Fair value is the fair value as defined in India's 113. It is basically an orderly transaction between knowledgeable parties acting without any compulsion, right? The amount that you pay to settle a liability or the amount that you get when you sell an asset, that is the fair value. We'll understand about this in detail in India's 113, how to compute, what are the factors that go into it. All of those things will be covered separately in 113. But for now, fair value is basically a value Fair value is basically a value that you will realize by selling this asset in an active market, in an orderly transaction between knowledgeable parties without any compulsion to transact, right? That is what is fair value. Then what is cost of disposal? Cost of disposal is the cost that is incurred to dispose of that asset. Say you have hired a broker to help you sell that particular asset. So brokerage paid on that, that could be a cost, to, cost of disposal. Or you have hired some professionals for documentation and all of those purposes, that could be a cost to sell. Or there would be some stamp duties which might be payable. There could be some transaction cost which could be payable, right? There could be some legal cost which could be payable. Any cost which is in relation to disposing of that particular asset will be considered as cost of disposal, right? So cost of disposal are incremental cost. That is the additional cost directly attributable, which has to be directly attributable to the disposal of an asset or a cash generating unit. So these costs are incremental means had you not disposed of that asset, you would not incur this particular cost. Say for example, stamp duty on sale of a property. Generally the buyer pays it, but say for example, the seller has agreed to bear that cost. Now the stamp duty, which is paid on the sale of the property, this would not have been incurred had we not sold this particular property. So you will have to see those costs which are being incurred because you are disposing of this particular property and you will exclude income taxes and finance costs from the cost of disposal. So cost of disposals are incremental cost directly attributable to the disposal of asset or a CGU except finance cost and income tax. We will be considering pre-tax cost of disposals only and what are these finance costs? If you have taken some loan for a particular asset on which you are paying interest, can you consider that as a part of cost of disposal? You cannot consider that as a part of cost of disposal. Now, sometimes what happens is the particular asset which is being sold might have to be removed from its current location and have to be moved to another location so that it can be sold off or it might, it might need dismantling or it might need some expenditure to make it ready for sale. For example, there is a property and the buyer tells you that I will buy this property only if you paint it properly. So you spend some amount to paint that particular property for the purpose of sale. All of these costs are cost of disposals which have to be reduced from the fair value. But if some of the cost or if some of the items are recognized as liabilities, then they will not be considered as cost of disposals. Say for example, if an entity is reorganizing its business and there are certain reorganization related liabilities or if the company is laying off staff and there are some termination benefits which are payable, which are recognized as liability. Now, let's say the CGU is being sold off and in relation to that CGU, there are some employees for which we have a liability to pay termination benefits. Now, this liability to pay termination benefits will not be considered as cost of disposal. They will be recognized as separate liabilities as given by India's 37. When we come to India's 37, we'll understand about this reorganization and restructuring part. But please understand here that if something has been recognized as a liability, then that will not be considered as cost of disposal. Or you already have recognized a dismantling liability, that will not be considered as cost of disposal. Now that we have understood fair value less cost of disposal, let us move on to the next component of recoverable amount, which is value in use. Value in use is simply the present value of future cash flows that will be derived from that asset or the cash generating unit. So you, what you need to do, you need to project future cash flows, you need to apply a discount rate and you need to arrive at the present value of future cash flows. Same concept that you would have learned in capital budgeting or you learn in valuation, same concepts are being applied here. Present value of future cash flows. Just one small thing that you need to keep in mind always is that here, whenever we are using a discount rate, we will use the 
प्री टैक्स डिस्काउंट रेट विल यूज द प्री टैक्स डिस्काउंट रेट सो द कैश फ्लोज ऑल्सो दैट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट विल बी प्री टैक्स कैश फ्लोज वेन यू लर्न इन एफ एम द कैपिटल बजेटिंग डिसीजन इन ऑल ऑफ दैट देर यू वुड बी कंसिडरिंग पोस्ट टैक्स कैश फ्लोज एंड पोस्ट टैक्स डिस्काउंट रेट बट हियर वी विल बी कंसिडरिंग प्री टैक्स कैश फ्लोज एंड प्री टैक्स डिस्काउंट रेट्स and the reason why we are using pre tax is we are comparing the value in use with the carrying amount now the carrying amount does not have any impact of taxation so we are using pre tax cash flows and pre tax discount rates now whenever we are computing this cash flows there will be cash flows by using that asset there would be cash flows from disposal of that asset so whatever is the cash flows from disposal of that asset that also needs to be considered but when you are disposing of an asset then there could be impact of capital gains tax right but that capital gains tax will not be considered again because we are considering pre tax cash flows only let us have a look at a small example and understand how do we calculate the value in use and then how do we calculate the impairment loss in that case mass limited gives following estimates of cash flows relating to property plant and equipment on 31st of march of year 4 so on 31st of march of year 4 there are cash flows given the discount rate given is 15% year 4 year 5 that is for year ended 31st march 5 it is 2000 it's in lakh so i'm just read out the numbers 2000 5 6 3000 6 then 6 7 7 8 8 9 and residual value at the end of 31st march of year 9 500 that is given property plant and equipment was purchased for 20000 on 1st of april of year 1 so when did we purchase 1st of april of year 1 it was purchased for 20000 and the useful life estimated was 8 years so 20000 was the purchase price useful life is 8 years okay residual value estimated at the end of 8 years is 500 lakhs and that is what is the cash residual value given as a part of the cash flow as well fair value less cost to disposal is 10000 so they have given us what is the fair value less cost of disposal that is 10000 calculate impairment loss if any on property plant and equipment and also calculate the revised carrying amount and revised depreciation of property plant and equipment so in this question there are two aspects first we have to arrive at the carrying amount as on 31st of march of year 4 applying the principles of india s 16 then we have to calculate the value in use by discounting this future cash flows at 15% then we have to compare this value in use with the fair value less cost of disposal to arrive at the recoverable amount and that recoverable amount we will compare with the carrying amount and see if there are any impairment losses or not so all the amounts are given in lakhs i'll just exclude those lakhs and compute the amounts for you in exams also you can do that to save time when was this property plan and equipment purchased it was purchased on 1st of april of year 1 and we need to calculate the carrying amount as on 31st of march of year 4 so please be careful in counting the number of date number of years 1st of april year 1 to 31st of march of year 2 is 1 year year 3 is 2 years year 4 is 3 years so we need to calculate depreciation for 3 years and the carrying amount as on 31st of march of year 4 so let us write down original cost on 1st of april of year 1 was 20000 residual value how much is the residual value 500 so the dep depreciable amount is your cost minus residual value that comes to 19500 now this depreciable amount of 19500 has to be depreciated over 8 years period so depreciation per year is 19500 divided by 8 years 19500 divided by 8 years assuming straight line that comes to 2437.5 right that is the depreciation per year so how much will be the depreciation for 3 years depreciation for 3 years will be this particular amount that is 2437.5 multiplied by 3 2437 multiplied by 3 we get 7312.5 that is depreciation for 3 years carrying amount as on 31st of march of year 4 will be your original cost 20000 minus this 7312 so 20000 minus 7312 you get the carrying amount as 12687.5 let me just write down here 20000 minus 
7312.5 right this gives us the carrying amount now, now what do we need to do is this carrying amount whatever we have got this we have to compare with the value in use and fair value less cost of disposal fair value less cost of disposal is given to be 10000 so obviously that is lower now we have to calculate what is the value in use now how do we calculate the value in use you will take the yearly cash flows discount it by 15% that is the rate which is given and arrive at the present value of future cash flows so for every year let us just note down so for year 5 2004 5 2005 6 2006 seven. I'm just writing two thousands for ease in remembering. It is year one, year two, and so on. I am writing two thousands for ease of uh, reference. Two thousand seven, eight, two thousand eight, and nine. And lastly, residual value is also two thousand eight, nine. Okay, what is the cash flow? Cash flows given are two thousand, three thousand, then another three thousand, four thousand, and two thousand and five hundred. You can combine these two also, and you, or you can show it separately also. Present value factor at fifteen percent. Now, if it is not given to you in the question, you can use to calculate present value factors at fifteen percent. If they are not given to you in the examination, by now you would be champions in this after learning FM, you know, accounting in inter and also SFM and also some parts of uh, FR here. One divided by one point one five. So one divided by one point one five. Press equal to once. You will get the for the first year. Then. This divided by 1.15, you can press equals to twice. You'll get the second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, and this will also be the same as the previous number, that is 4.4972. There could be some rounding of differences. You need not worry about that. Okay. So 2000 multiplied by present value factor, you get 1739. I'm just increase it. 1739.13. For next year, it is 2268.43. Then one nine seven two point five five, so on and so forth. You can do the calculations. The value in use, that is, sum of the present value of future cash flows, that is, sum of two forty eight point five nine nine ninety four point three five two two eight seven point zero one one nine seven two point five five two two six eight point four three and one seven three nine point one three. The total comes to nine five one zero point zero six. You can round it off to nine five one zero as well. Not a problem. Okay. So. Value in use is nine five one zero point zero six, and your fair value less cost of disposal is given to be ten thousand. Higher of these two, this number and this number, which one is higher? Obviously, fair value less cost of disposal is higher. So, what is the recoverable amount? Recoverable amount is equal to ten thousand, right? And what is the carrying amount? Carrying amount you can get it from top here. Which is one two six eight seven point five. So impairment loss is equal to one two six eight seven point five minus ten thousand. You get two six eight seven point five. This is the impairment loss, right? Now this impairment loss is generally debited to P&L unless there is a revaluation surplus. We'll come to the accounting treatment later. For now, we have understood how to compute the impairment loss. In this case, it has come to two six eight seven point five. What will you do with this impairment loss? You will bring down the carrying amount of the property, plant, and equipment to ten thousand. You will bring down the carrying amount of property, plant, and equipment to ten thousand. So, carrying amount at end as on thirty first March year four will be how much? Ten thousand. Why? Because from twelve six eight seven, you will reduce this impairment loss and then arrive at the carrying amount of ten thousand. Now, what is the residual value? It has not changed. It is still five hundred. Revised depreciable amount will be ten thousand minus five hundred nine thousand five hundred. This has to be depreciated over remaining five years. So, revised depreciation per year is. Nine thousand five hundred divided by five remaining years that comes to nineteen thousand nineteen hundred per year. Okay, this is the simplistic computation of your impairment loss, the revised carrying amount, and revised depreciable amount. Now, one thing if you would have noted here is that we computed carrying amount as on thirty first of March of year four, but before that we had already given the impact of depreciation for that year. So. Whenever you are computing impairment, you have to consider the carrying amount after charging depreciation. After 
charging depreciation. So we charge depreciation till 31st of March of year 4. Then whatever was the carrying amount, that carrying amount was compared with the recoverable amount because this carrying amount includes depreciation charge for the year ended 31st of March of year 4.